Thanks for watching our video on mountaintop mining, our standalone GIS application that we created for the GIS programming class at Brigham Young University under the direction of Dan Ames. This is Carly Hyatt. And I'm Nathan Davis. And we're looking right here at our website uh, that we created just using Google Sites. You can see the address in the browser up above. Um, and this just describes what the application does and the purpose of it, and so I'll just read that really quick. The program was created to allow the user to import a DEM of a potential mining location, then draw a polygon representing a proposed mining cut, and compute the volume of that material to be removed, and then it creates an updated DEM showing the cut and showing raised elevations in the locations where the material is placed. So on our website, if you click under the Documents header, this Go Now button, brings you to, uh, to where the installation packages are. So once you click on the Documents page, you'll see the installation files located in the Mountaintop Miner zip folder, and then all the files needed for the tutorial that we'll go through in the Tutorial zip folder. So we're going to open up the tutorial. So here's the PDF that's included in that zip folder. It's also included under the help right here, that tutorial, um, so you can access it from the application as well. So to introduce the interface, you can see it's composed of five different things. We've got a menu bar up at the top, the tool strip just below that, a legend that corresponds with the map area, and then an information strip at the bottom. So we're going to walk you through an example of how the program works. You start by adding a raster layer, and you can do that either by choosing Insert, and then adding the layer through that way, or by clicking that green plus button. Um, and in the tutorial, we've included an example of raster, that iron. Um, so we've added that. And this is just checking to make sure that it's projected correctly. You want to make sure that the linear units are meters so that it'll compute the volume correctly later on. So now we've got our raster, and the next step, you'll create a cut polygon. So by clicking on the up arrow, it'll bring up this dialog just letting you know what you have to do next. follow along here in the tutorial as well. So we've added the raster layer, and then we're going to draw the polygon by clicking on the map in our desired area, and then double-clicking to finish the polygon. After you've done the cut polygon, you'll then draw another polygon which will represent the area that you want to put the earth, or uh, where you're going to fill. So you can see, just following along in the tutorial, clicking that down arrow, drawing your other polygon, and double-clicking to close, just like the previous one. Alright, so now you've got your cut areas and your fill areas, so then you'll need to specify the, the elevation that you want to cut at, so by typing in, um, we'll choose 2500 meters for our cut elevation, um, just like the tutorial says. And then you'll click on this Create New Raster Using Cut Elevation button. So it looks like a little process, and right now it's just computing the volume. And then it'll pop up with this message box that tells you the volume that you've cut. And then you'll notice that the raster has changed, so it's created a new raster with the new elevations um, reflecting the cuts and the fills that have been made. You'll see that in the map legend, all of those layers, the polygons that you created, and then that new raster are generated and added to the map area. All right, and now Nathan's going to walk us through um, some of the additional features. All right, we added some controls for the map just so you can explore a little bit. Uh, there's the arrow with the panning button, the zoom out zoom in so we could zoom in a little closer around this area if we wanted to. And then the, one of our favorites is you can click this view, display coordinates, and it'll show you the elevation. On top is the original elevation. If we come over here, 
Now there's the new elevation. This is the cut polygon. So it's been cut to 2500. And uh, you can see that it shows both elevations. Also, it shows the coordinates at the bottom as you're moving over the mouse, or moving over the map. You can see that works very well. Uh, now I'll go on and point out just some of how our code for the program was organized. We used Visual Studio, and we're using this C-sharp programming language to uh, control this. So we've used a lot of uh, DLLs that allow our program to perform a lot of functions. And you'll see here that we've named it mining, and we've declared a bunch of variables that help us throughout the process, and we've just initialized some of those to zero or null, just to help that along. So I'll go through real quick just the organization of it, and then we'll highlight just two of those that we feel are unique to our application. This one uh, is on the load of the form. We have an insert layer. This is what we use to add that raster layer to the program. This does the same thing, just the other button. Uh, and this is that function that's run when you click either of those buttons. This function that here is uh, clicking to display the coordinates so that you can see those as well as the elevations at the different points. And this map main mouse over is used uh, to update those as you move the mouse over the coordinates. Here's one that we, we are going to highlight, and that's the digitizing of the polygons. You'll see that there's a couple different things. The first one is the cut polygon. I'll expand this. And from this you can see this is initializing saying we are going to start displaying our cut polygon. So that message box, pop, message box pops up telling you what to do. And it sets this variable and digitizing equal to true, just so the program knows that you are in a digitizing mode. And we reset the list of coordinates. These are dot spatial coordinates that are stored in a list. And then as you do that, now one, when you click on the map, this other function will run. And so it checks to see, are we in the digitizing mode? and then it runs this update features and passes in the coordinates where you clicked. And that final is this update features. And this is uh, the meat, I guess you could say, of, of what's that, what it's doing. So it takes the coordinates, uh, creates a point, and adds a new point, and passes those on. We then project that point to the projection that the map is in, and we add that point to our list of points. And so we count, and once it gets over three, you'll notice that that's when it started to display the polygon that we had created. And so once there are enough points for it to be a polygon, it starts displaying that. So it adds it to these temporary feature sets, and adds the feature to the map each time you click, and clears any others that were there. And so it re tries to remove the others and add that. And then Right here, this double click is doing a lot of the same thing, only it's also closing the polygon, saving it, and adding the final raster to the map. So that's one of the things that we wanted to highlight in our code. Um, as we move through the code, you can also see there's a similar one for the fill polygon. It would go through similar steps. It's just named a different, different polygon for the calculator. And that calculator is the other thing that we wanted to highlight real quick. Uh, and so that's this function, tool, tool strip calculator. And when you click on that button, and so it runs a catch to see, to make sure that there is a main raster in there. And as long as there is, it moves on, initializes some of the variables. And it takes the polygon and the fill polygons and sets those up as the polygons that you've already defined. Uh, we create a cut elevation variable, and that's to help us store the elevation of that we want to cut to. So we take our original raster and basically copy it and make a new one here with the same number of row and columns and same data type, same bounds and projection. And we get the cell size, where we take the 
the cells that are in there and we take the area and divide it by the number of cells so that we can know how big each cell is. Then we loop through each of our each cell in the in the raster and we check a few things as we do that. We check to see if it intersects the polygon and if it does or if it's and if it does intersect and if it's less than the cut elevation then it just equals the same same amount. If it doesn't then we set that value equal to the cut elevation. We also are keeping track of how many cells we're cutting volume out of so that we can calculate that volume later. And that's what this volume variable is for. And then this part is if it doesn't intersect the polygon, it also stays the same. So we do that. We take the cut volume is equal to volume times our cell size so that we can calculate the volume in there. And then we're creating a third raster. So we're doing a similar thing as we did when we were cutting, only we're looping over the fill and we loop through first to see how many cells are in the fill, divide our volume by that number, and then evenly add it to each cell in that. Uh, that's in the fill polygon, and that's what this section is doing here. And then finally we set some projections and define which one is the fill raster. We check the units and add that back to the map a little bit later. But first we check to make sure so that we can calculate that volume and make sure it's in the correct units. So as long as the map says that it's either meters or meter, meter or meters, then it runs this function calc volume, which is uh, just calculating the volume of each raster. So that's the code for, for Mountaintop Miner. Uh, these other things are basic map functions to control the map and to zoom and pan and other things like that. But we've enjoyed sharing this with you. We hope you've enjoyed and have learned from it and that you'll find a great use out of it. Thanks for watching.